Let's have a little wriggle about so the feeling evenly placed. And then hold onto your knees, lift up into the chest and draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Just spend a moment listening to the sound of the breath. Consciously lengthening your neck upwards, drawing your shoulders down. Just listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Just look at the floor, look at something that doesn't move. Keep your eyes still in the sockets. And then bring your hands into Namaste, press the palms firmly together. Lengthen from the armpits into the elbows and then release your eyelids so that you close your eyes. Spend a little time listening to the sound of the breath in through the nose and out through the nose, listening to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Fill in the lungs evenly. Emptying the lungs evenly. And then very gently draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. Hold on to that feeling of abundance. Release the backs of your hands down toward your knees. And then as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open. Just hold on to your knees, lift up into the chest. So pull against the knees so that you've got elevation in the spine. So pulling against the knees helps you to really lengthen and broaden the front chest. Take a deep inhalation and then turn to the right side, drawing your abdomen across your ribs, your shoulders across. Just listen to the breath and use the out breath to turn a little more deeply.
come back to the center hold on to your knees lift up into your chest drive your chest up to the ceiling take a deep inhalation and then turn to the left just feel where there is resistance and turn a little more deeply listening to the breath back to the center just come off your left and sit yourself on your heels just have a little wriggle into your hips so feel that your shins make good contact with the floor they mold into the floor press the shin bone into the shin skin to activate the thighs and to bring the shins really firmly into connection with the floor, lift up into the chest and then stretch forwards. Just feel how you can stretch into the back. Keep wriggling the hips a little just so that you maintain that connection between the seat bones and the heels. Don't go into the full pose too quickly. Keep lifting the chest. As you come down, drawing the chest towards the floor rather than the head. Keeping the head lifted, keeping the arms activated, keeping the seat bones down on the heels and then bring the forehead down. And then you'll probably notice that the floor feels closer than you expected. Spread the fingers. Squeeze the outer elbows inward. Just listen to the sound of the breath. Turn the tailbone in, draw the tailbone down to the floor. Spread the armpits, spread the palms. Press the forehead consciously into the floor, lengthening the skull upwards, but drawing the forehead skin down towards the crown of the nose. So that you help to quieten the brain by applying a little pressure to the frontal lobes of the brain. Pressing the forehead into the floor. Just lift your head, keep your right hand where it is, thread the left hand underneath the right armpit and then try and bring the shoulder down onto the floor if you can, just rest your head onto the floor. You'll probably find that you lift the seat bones at this stage, so try and draw them down. You might not necessarily manage it, but aim to keep that right arm really firm and then roll the chest down towards the floor push the left arm consciously into the floor and you really tend to prise open the inner shoulder blade so thread in the needle trying to sit back down on the heels if you can pressing the left arm firmly into the floor and then keeping the right arm really active and trying to roll the chest down towards the floor and then reach forwards with both arms just come back into adam mukha svanasana just see if there's any difference in the feeling of the pose and then keep the left hand where it is thread the right arm underneath the left armpit and then bring that right shoulder down if you can Rest your head down if you can. Lengthen from the left hand into the left buttock bone, trying to keep the seat bones down. 
press the right arm firmly into the floor and then roll your chest down to the to face the floor breathing evenly deeply listening to the sound of the breath And then extend into your arms, stretch the arms away. Just come back into Adamukha Varasana, stretching both arms away, really stretching the spine out. And then come up onto your knees, have your hands as wide apart as the mat, little fingers on the edge of the mat, stretching the thumbs towards each other. Turn your toes under. And then come up into dog down, bending your knees so that you can activate the tailbone and the seat bones, elevating those up towards the ceiling so that you draw the shoulder blades in. And then begin to straighten the legs. Activating the shins, lifting the shins out of the ankle socket, turning the shins, the fronts of the shins, inward so that the heels start to separate lifting the kneecaps up away from the shins lifting the thigh muscles away from the kneecaps up into the hip socket pressing the palms of the hands flat into the floor to take the weight off the heel of the hand taking the weight in turn off the shoulders so pressing the palm knuckles into the floor Okay, step your feet forwards, come up into a standing position. Just align your feet with the edge of the mat, turning your toes inwards. Again, activating the legs as you were doing in dog down. Turning the shins inwards, turning the inner knees towards the back of the room, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards. But notice that that action, um, when, you, when you do it intensely, makes you drop in the insteps. So you have to accommodate for that. So keep turning the legs inwards, but then push the inner knees away from each other. And then lift the inner knees up towards the groin. Raise your arms up. Put the thumbs into the crease of the elbows, wrap your fingers around your elbows, and then keeping the legs really firm, hang down in Uttanasana. So assessing where the weight in your feet is. Are you hitting your shins forwards and your weight going into your toes? Or can you hit your shins back so that your weight goes into the heels, into the center of the heel, and press the heel down, lift the seat bones up away from the heels. Turning those heels inwards, hitting the, turning the inner knees back, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards, hitting the inner knees away from each other, lifting those inner knees up towards the groin.
just stretching out the back use blocks under your hands if you are struggling to reach the floor although of course we're not touching the floor with the arms we're interlocking the thumbs into the crease of the elbow but if you're miles away from the floor then try and put the blocks underneath your hands a half utanasana and then release your hands down to the floor and then come into half utanasana or put blocks under your hands if you can't reach and then just reset the action of the legs turning them inwards hitting the inner knees away from each other lifting the inner knees up towards the groin so that the legs feel really long hitting the shins back so that your weight is in your heels and then pressing the heels into the floor lengthening up into the seat bones projecting the chin and the chest forward so with your arms on the floor extending the chin and the chest away and then bring your hands into your hips bend your knees on the way up if you need to and then come into tadasana just be in tadasana lifting up into the chest just breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath So stretch your arms forward, draw your consciousness into each individual finger, at the same time draw your consciousness into each individual toe. Interlock the fingers. Turn the palms all the way out, don't worry about cracks and pops, and then raise your arms over your head. Listen to the sound of the breath, turning the fronts of the legs inwards, turning the inner knees towards the back of the room, lifting up into the chest. Being soft with the jaw, soft with the tongue, maintaining the action of the legs to lift the insteps. You hit the inner knees apart and then lift the inner knees up towards the groin. And release your arms, swap the interlock of the fingers and then turn the palms all the way out again and raise your arms over your head. So good for stiff shoulders. So you go back to the legs, back to the feet, hit your shins back so that your weight is in your heels and then stamp the heels down. And then notice that you get length along the side ribs. Turn the fronts of the shins inwards, turn the fronts of the, the inner knees back, turn the fronts of the thighs in, and then hit the inner knees apart. And again, notice space in the side ribs. Lift the inner knees up towards the inner groin. And again, space to extend into the spine. Just keeping the breath deep and gentle. your arms release your shoulders and then just come back into Tadasana to get a belt for your shoulders for Gomakasana and then come back into Tadasana so these days, because my shoulders are so stiff, I really need the belt. Not everyone needs the belt, but it's handy to have it there just in case. 
So just reset your Tadasana. Stretch your arm forward. Turn the palm all the way out, trying to rotate the upper arm in the socket as you do so. And then reach behind you, really rotating the arm in the socket. So there's often some resistance there. And then lengthen behind you. And then see if you can assist that arm up the back. Now I've got this shoulder it is really, really stiff. So there's some real resistance there. So you just respect that resistance. Try and draw the um, fingers up towards the um, up towards the neck, and then reach up, and then reach down, and then see can you take hold of the hands. If you can't, like me, then you just use the belt, and then just use the belt to kind of prise the arms apart, but also creep them to, to, towards each other. So as you're there, see if you can shorten the distance between the arms. So pull the bottom elbow towards the floor, the top elbow up to the shoulder. Breathe evenly, even where there is resistance. Push the out breath into areas of resistance. So pushing your out breath into those areas of resistance perhaps just helps you to soften that resistance a little. Keep the head extending up towards the ceiling, pull the bot bottom elbow to the floor, the top elbow to the ceiling. So it's almost like you're in a bit of a tug of war between the two hands. Really pushing that out breath into that, those areas of resistance, creeping the hands a little closer together each, after each couple of breaths. Okay, and then release the top arm, just gently release that bottom arm it might feel like it's stuck don't worry it's not just be gentle and then stretch your arms out lift up into the chest just stretch your arms down to the floor turn the palms all the way out just maintaining your tadasana Okay, and then just relax for a moment, swap the, the belt over to the other shoulder and lift up into the chest. Again, turn the palms all the way out so that the upper arm rotates in the socket. Pushing your out breath into the shoulders. Stretch forwards with the right hand. Just let the left hand soften for a moment. And then rotate the whole of the palm, the whole of the upper arm in the socket, and then reach behind you, and then assist that arm up the back with the other. And then reach up, reach out of the previous pose. So there'll be some remnants of that previous pose in the shoulder so stretch out of it so it feels good doesn't it and then reach down see if you can get hold of the hands or use the belt and then prise the elbows apart really activating your legs in that 
really firm Tadasana action, turning the legs inwards, pushing the inner knees away from each other, lifting the inner knees up towards the groin. Just feel any difference within feeling of the pose. Just listening to the breath. Just opening up the shoulders through Gomakasana, prising the elbows apart. See if you can maybe creep the hands a little closer together on the belt or with the fingers. So on this side, I'm, I'm pretty much there. Pulling the upper elbow to the ceiling, the bottom elbow to the floor. Pushing your out breath into areas of discomfort. Keeping the hands together a little bit at a time. And then very gently release the top shoulder and then release the bottom arm. Stretch into the fingertips and again turn the palms all the way out, opening the collarbone. Squeezing the shoulder blades together, just lifting up into the chest, just breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. just very gently release. So we've just been opening up the energy of the shoulders. So bring your feet hip width apart, turn your toes in, raise your arms up and over your head, reach up into Urdhva Hastasana, just feel if there's any difference in the shoulders. And then again, hook the thumb into the crease of the elbows, wrap your fingers around your elbows, and then just hang down. Use blocks under your hands or bring your hand onto the back of a chair if there's stiffness in your back. Otherwise, just allow the body to consciously hang down. Activate those legs. Make sure that your heels are wider apart than your big toes. Turn the shins inwards, turn the inner knees towards the back of the room, turn the fronts of the thighs inwards, push the inner knees away from each other and then lengthen the inner knees up towards the groin. And notice that you can lengthen more in the spine when the legs are working really determinedly. And then bring your hands down to the floor. Walk your hands towards the end of the mat. Have your hands shoulder width apart. Step the feet back. Have the feet hip width apart. And then back into Adamukha Svanasana. Dog down. Activating the legs in the same way as you were doing in Uttanasana. Keeping the heels nice and high though, so that you can keep the seat bones lifted. Just see if you can bring the heels a little closer to the floor, but without dropping the legs, without losing the action of the legs. I mean, I can bring my heels easily down to the floor, but not at the expense of, if I lose the action of the legs. So be aware of 
how one thing connects to the next. Okay, come down onto your knees. And then just sit back on your heels for a moment. Just observe lightness of energy. The energy around the shoulders, around the neck. Okay, we're going to do a couple of, well, maybe not a couple, but we're going to do um, a restorative pose called Mountain Brook because we're working in shoulders. This is really, really good for kind of like um, for stiff shoulders. So you've got your blanket kind of unfolded like that. So usually fold it like that to, to, um, you know, to sit on or to have it on top of your head, but have it unfolded like this. So you've got kind of a, I guess that's probably called an eighth fold or no quarter fold. And then I want you to fold it down the middle like that. So you've got quite a thick um, little bolster from underneath your shoulder blades and then have a bolster. If you haven't got a bolster, just get some cushions and put them underneath your knees. So you've got this folded blanket here and that's going to go into the shoulder blades. <clears throat> And you've got a bolster underneath your knees. So you're just going to come down onto the floor. Find the folded blanket in the shoulder blade region. And it feels actually relatively intense, even though it's only kind of, you know, just a folded blanket. And then all you do is just have the bolster underneath your knees and then just rest your arms down on the floor. Now, if you've got stiffness in your shoulders, then maybe you need a block underneath your hands just to kind of ease your way there. So you might have it high up like this to start off with. And after a little while, you might go down. Just feel where that resistance is. So just use whatever you need. The, aim of a restorative pose is not to extend in the way that we do in our kind of Iyengar inspired poses, it's to relax. So if you've got um, an injury or a condition that of stiffness or resistance, then that can be challenging to stay in the pose. So use whatever you need, use blocks under your hands or whatever you need. So make sure that the bolts, that the folded blanket is underneath the shoulder blades, bringing the shoulders down onto the floor as much as you can, and then resting your arms on the floor over your head. And then relax. Be conscious of areas of resistance and push your out breath into those regions. So we're going to stay here for a, a little while, ideally five plus minutes, but we'll just see how we go. Just let the body relax. Let the body release into the floor. Push your out breath into areas of resistance. So this pose opens up the chest incre incredibly and opens up the shoulders. 
So you might rest one hand on top of the other, just alternate that, just so that you really get into problematic shoulders. But the most important thing is that you don't suffer discomfort. You accommodate that discomfort by using equipment. So if this is really uncomfortable, then put a block underneath your hands. So this opens up the armpits and circulation to the lymphatic system. But relaxing also helps with the circulation of the lymphatic system, which boosts the immune system. So allow the body to relax into this pose. Okay, and then just very gently bring your arms back. Just rest your hands on your lower ribs. And then bend your knees and roll onto your side. And then sit yourself up. Just come into cross-legged position. Just feel... The energy of the pose, maybe how it's opened up the shoulders a little. And then just unfold your blanket. So it's like this quarter fold again, and then roll up the ends of the, bl the blanket like that so you got a little bit like a swiss roll and that's going to support your head again you're going to use a, sh a, sh um, a bolster so this is um, a supported 
bridge pose. It's a little bit like Setu Banda, it's quite a lot like Setu Banda, but we relax into it. So make the roll so that it feels like it's really supporting the back of your neck. You don't want to kind of stop the blood flow though. So just don't have it too big, but it needs to feel really comfortable in your neck. Like your neck is just really beautifully supported. And then you're just going to come up onto your onto your feet, bring the bolster underneath. So rather than the tailbone region, when you're using the bolster like this, you bring the bolster into the more like the lumbar. And then you can either rest your arms at the sides of the of the um, of the body, just resting yourself into the roll underneath the neck so it just really softens out any tension in the neck try and keep the chest lifted so don't let the chest drop if you find that the chest drops then just shuffle the bolster a little bit higher up your back so that the chest just opens a little more efficiently so you can either have your hands at the sides of the body or you could even have the arms over your head in Kind of a mountain brook type type weight but you just find a way that is better for your neck just softening the neck and again just release into the pose so this is a restorative pose so rather than conscious extension we allow the body to relax we give ourselves permission to relax into the pose so this really helps to ease out a stiff neck if it feels like you need more or less lift underneath your neck then just adjust it make sure that your equipment is supporting you rather than hindering just let the body release into the floor Feeling that lightness of energy radiating out from the bones into the muscles, into the flesh and into the skin.
okay just stay with the rolled up blanket underneath your neck just lift the seat bones roll the bolster away and then just have the bolster underneath your knees keep in with the roll underneath your neck and just release into the floor Let go of the muscles of the arms and the legs, unhook in the muscles so that the you immediately access that lightness of energy. So the more you can let go of the physical body, the more you can access the lightness of your inner energy. Just basking in that feeling of energetic lightness. Ready, just wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Just bend your knees, bring your feet onto the bolster, have your knees apart, so your knees together, your feet apart. Resting your back into the floor. And then just hold onto your knees, just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. And then roll over onto your right side. Just stay down for a breath or two. And then straighten it out the top leg, come back up into a seated position. And then come into cross legs. Cross legs with your hands in the masti. Just a spinal, a final spinal lift. Drawing your breath in through your nose and down into the abdomen. Be conscious of the energy that you have released through your practice this morning, that good, positive, healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions, the forward bends, the reclining poses, the restorative poses bring to the body and to the mind. And then gently draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to acknowledge the positive energy that you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. Place the backs of your hands down toward your knees, palms facing upwards. And as you raise your head, allow your eyes.
eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel like your shoulders are a little bit more limber than they were before you started. Maybe your neck is a little softer than it was before you started. So thank you very much. Have a great day.